Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to convert a DAS G8 character into a CC3 Base Plus using the Transformer tool in Character Creator 3. CC3 Base Plus characters have refined shoulders compared to the previous versions, and you can see that they are smoothed out, and also provide a smoother and more natural look when moving as well. The thumbs on the hands also have improved movement performance as well, and you can also see that the normal maps on the CC3 Base Plus characters have been improved, as they were previously inverted. The normal map seams between the shoulders and chests have also been fixed to provide a more complete look as well. And with all CC3 Base Plus characters, the shader will automatically be set to the digital human shader. The character we're going to be using for import is this Gwyn HD for Genesis 8 character. This pipeline will work for all G3, G8 characters. CC3 Base Plus characters use an A pose for conversion as they have more details than the traditional T pose. Once you import your character into DAZ, you want to apply the special G8 APOSE DUF that can be found in the DAZ resource subfolder of your Character Creator 3 program folder. Simply click and drag it onto your character, then you can proceed to export to FBX with the following settings. Once the export is finished, click on the Transformer tool in the toolbar to start the import process. Select CC3 Base Plus and then select your FBX file. There are a couple of import options here, basic and advanced mode. The basic mode will only adopt the diffuse and opacity maps from the FBX file. This is a quick way to do things that provides you with a more basic look of the materials. In advanced mode, it will adopt the diffuse, opacity, bump or normal, ambient occlusion, displacement, specular, metallic and roughness maps. For roughness it may also be converted from a specular map. This process will take longer and may result in some texture issues if the texture names do not follow the naming conventions. For more on the naming conventions, please see the manual link in the description. On import, let's choose to bake the textures and then select a 2048 resolution. You can also click on the button here, which will open up the Explorer folder containing your APOS DUF. Once import is finished, you'll see that the Transformer tool will transfer both the DAZ eyes and teeth to Character Creator. For more accurate shader results, you can replace them with embedded eye content. Afterwards, you'll see a more accurate reflection result. CC3 Base Plus characters also have a unique feature called Enhance Eyes, which will create a tear line and also eye occlusion, which makes the eyes look more realistic. You can also then further adjust the eye shader using all of the parameters. Let's also replace the teeth with embedded teeth as well. If the position of the teeth is not ideal, you can also adjust the bone to fix it. To do so, make sure the character is selected, then select the Adjust Bones tool. Make sure the face is selected for bone type, and also include eye and teeth for your target. You can change to wireframe mode using the Alt-3 hotkey to get a better look at where they are positioned in the mouth while you adjust. Next, we're going to take a look at the eye shader. Under the eye materials, you'll have two items for the left and right cornea. These are the materials that will have an effect on the appearance of your eyes. I'm going to control select both of them and then go down into the shader settings. Here, you'll find the texture maps used for the digital human shader, as well as parameters for all the different components of the eyes. To learn more about the structure of the CC3 Base Plus eyes, you can follow the manual link in the description. You can also use the powerful skin gen tool in Character Creator to further enhance your character's appearance with everything from blemishes and additional normal effects to an excellent makeup system. You can add a very subtle amount of dullness to your character's eyes via the preset layer templates available with the Realistic Human Skin Pack for Skin Gen. Subtle lip details can be added simply by clicking and dragging from the vast library of additional normal effects. Once you've got the base ready, you can begin adjusting the various makeup layers such as eyebrow type and position, and enhance further with things like eyeshadow, eyeliner, and lipstick, each with their own customizable parameters that enable you to get exactly the look that you want. We have a bunch of tutorials on using skin gen that I encourage you to check out. Character Creator also includes a huge library of hundreds of different morph sliders that allow you to customize even the smallest detail of your character's head and facial features. In this case, we're going to use an ear angle and elf ear parameters to give our character an elf-like ear appearance. Next, we're going to import in the Daz hair as you can see here. There is a link in the description that provides more details about how to import Daz character hair separately. In this case, we've already saved it as an accessory, so I'm going to simply apply it to my character. 
you can see upon application to my character that all the different hair materials are set to PBR. So I'm going to make sure they're all selected and then change to the digital human shader. Once it has been converted, then the relevant parameters will show up in the materials tab. There is a hair specular mask texture channel that is generated here, however in some cases you may want to delete this and manually adjust the texture settings yourself to get the desired result. What I'm doing here is demonstrating how you can take the base color map and apply it to different texture channels to customize the result. If I apply it to the specular mask channel, it will have a very subtle effect on that selected material. However, if I apply it to the metallic channel of all of the materials, it will have a much stronger effect as you can see here. You can then go in and further adjust the colors of that texture map to tweak the hair in order to get the results that you want. We can then copy that map to the roughness channel and adjust the parameters there as well. Generally, you'll want your roughness map to be slightly brighter for hair. In addition to adjusting the texture maps, there's also a large number of additional parameters below that you can tweak as well. You can see here that there are strength parameters for all the texture properties including diffuse, specular, and more. Adjusting these values will provide very subtle changes to the appearance of the hair. You can use them to make the hair more shiny and sleek, or dull and bland looking. That's about all there is to show in this tutorial guys. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you learned a lot. Make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and check back on our YouTube channel regularly for tutorials like this one. I'll see you in the next video.